Hello, everyone. I'm Dennis. I'm currently the head of AI at IG Index, and today I'll be talking to you about stakeholder management from a data science perspective. Now, there's a lot of material around stakeholder management all the way uh, back from the 60s. Uh, it's not a new subject, but the point of view of a data scientist is fairly recent, and I think it will be useful to many of you. So I'll briefly cover what's the standard data science process, how do data science teams operate, what are the types of stakeholders they interact with, what are the challenges they face, how they can resolve those challenges, and what are the best practices for success. So what is the data science process? Roughly, it's something like that. This should be familiar to most of you. You start by collecting your data, which usually takes months. Clean, prepare, and manipulate. Uh, this does take a lot of time as well. Training and testing happens as quickly as possible, and then improve uh, again and again. So pretty standard, get the data, play with it, train a model, then make it better. Let's look at another one. So here it starts with asking a question. Then you select the data, pre-processing, transformation, data mining, evaluation, deployment. So what's new here is the process starts with someone asking a question, which hopefully all this data work will try to answer. So ideally, that question is a business question. Let's move on to the next one. This one looks about the same. Get data, explore, model, visualize, simulate. But the new addition, use results in business. It's the first slide of a data science process that makes the case of all this work actually has to be used in a business environment. There is a little box there, business application, and I've purposely left the sample text, says this is a sample text, insert your desired text here, to showcase that this structure is pretty agnostic, it doesn't matter what the business application is, this data science process uh, works for everything. So we reached a data science process that we're happy with. It includes the business. Ideally, it can start with asking a question. What's missing from all of this? Uh, going around today, I've heard plenty of interesting talks, uh, bleeding edge projects, cool ideas. What's, what's missing? Like being a practitioner, what I'm asking is, who greenlit the project? Who agreed to it? Who paid for it? Uh, who, who's the stakeholder? Uh, ideas, in theory, can be great. Ideas in practice are even better. So for this traffic light, uh, very beautiful picture, I chose the one that has all three colors on at the same time, and that's not coincidental. It's how a data scientist many times feels uh, that's the status of his project. There's parts of the company or of the team or one stakeholder who's greenlit the project. It's all great. It's going forward. Other parts of the company, the red part would be, I'm opposed to that, is taking resources from something I want to do. And a lot of it is in the middle where everyone is a bit unsure of what's happening. That's not an ideal situation, but that's how data scientists operate. So let's briefly check our types of stakeholders. First up, you have technical stakeholders, could be a lead data scientist, um, like, or a technical person that manages a more junior data scientist. They're not really stakeholders, they're just included in the list of people you have to convince to push your idea across. So, the great thing about them is you have a common ground, they understand exactly what you're aiming for, and they can help you a lot by fine-tuning it to present it to the business, and if they feel there's value in it, even champion it alongside you. Then you have managers, uh, head of departments, depending on the size of the company, they can be directors, VPs, any other title. Uh, those colleagues are typically in charge of a few teams, handling a lot of projects at the same time. 
um, when you reach out to them to present a new idea, saying, okay, I think we should be doing this, the company can benefit and uses the latest tech and it's very nice, uh, you're basically being disruptive. So when you do that, you better have already, like, you have a strong case for what you're saying. You've, you've done your homework. Otherwise, you're just wasting everyone's time. Next up, uh, executives, uh, C-level people, uh, obviously extremely limited time available for you. Uh, most of the time, they may not even be aware of who you are or what you're working on, or if you actually get to pitch something to them, maybe they don't even know exactly what you're talking about. Uh, one cheesy piece of advice, if you do actually have an actual elevator pitch, just hit all the buttons until you reach your destination, giving you a few extra seconds. Uh, finally, uh, you have investors, not your typical stakeholders, but it's not uncommon for a data scientist to uh, having, having to talk to an investor. Uh, most of the time, investors want to check up that the insides of how money is generated is uh, it's not fake. And those, those types of meetings, most of the time, have a, a very specific agenda, like it's not a random meet and greet with an investor. There's something they want out of you. So the best way to handle that relationship is sort of a give-and-take approach, where you try to give them what they ask for through your data science work. You try to push the two together. Easier said than done. So what kind of challenges do those different types have? Quite a lot. This is the heaviest slide of the presentation. <laughs> so we can roughly uh, group it to three types of challenges. There's many more. I think those are sufficient for now. First up, lack of experience in data science capabilities. Uh, in many companies, senior management doesn't really understand or appreciate the difference between a data scientist, a data engineer, a software developer, DevOps engineers, you name it. They're all seen as computer people writing code. So from a data scientist perspective, that causes the frustration of their given engineering work, or they're being asked to build reports, creates frustration, creates a bad environment. Uh, at the end of the day, they're not using their full skill set. Secondly, uh, it's quite common the business is unaware of the potential value of the data it has. Uh, they were, a few years ago, everyone was pretty smart at the time to start collecting it. But in a lot of places, the value of what they've collected is not yet uh, realized. So as a data scientist, it, it falls on you every day, in every way, champion the value of data. It's entirely up to you. If you don't do it, no one else is going to do it. And a third sort of challenge, let's say, is uh, it doesn't happen as often as anymore. Uh, still does in some places, building a team without a plan. Uh, it's basically, you hear, wow, data science or AI is amazing, it's going to solve all our problems, let's open up a few positions, build a team, and everything will work out. Um, so if you join such a team, there's pros and cons. The obvious con is that you're just spinning your wheel, you don't have a direction, uh, you don't really do anything. The good thing about it is, uh, if the environment allows it, you get to design and lead that team. You get to build the plan yourself. Uh, pretty difficult to pull off, but it's great when it happens. Second group is strategy and roadmap is defined at the business level. When there's a quarterly, uh, project revision or annual or semi-annual, uh, rarely do data scientists get consulted with what are you guys working on, what do you want to do. It starts from the top down. Uh, so when you pitch a project, you find that, yeah, wow, well, it's very interesting, but all our engineering resources are tied up with other projects. So it will have to wait. 
and companies in general tend to have a focus on software solutions. Uh, there's been enough time that most companies can visualize, design, and ask for a software solution that makes the process easier. The same hasn't happened for data science yet. So it's a bit more tricky. And uh, as always, there's a bias towards immediate delivery, short-term gains, and projects that advocate more research and a more long-term strategic approach uh, tend to be frowned upon. And the third group, which is, I mean, hopefully it's rare, but I haven't counted it, so I thought that I included, is the fear from stakeholders that AI will replace humans. Uh, they want all decision-making to always be at the human level, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. Uh, then there's a host of regulatory and compliance issues, which are more serious. Uh, a data scientist rarely thinks in terms of regulations. So if anything, that's an honest challenge. And then there's the group of people who are seriously afraid that uh, we're going to build a solution that's going to basically get them fired. And that's at the stakeholder level. So they don't seem to realize how difficult this is. So those challenges and others lead us to the, what I call the vicious circle of data science projects. So you join a company or you start a new group, you're asked to show the value of data science. How you do that? You need resources and business buy-in in order to deliver high-impact data science projects in order to show the value of data science. Uh, the funny thing is you're supposed to do step number one without steps number two and three. So it's, it's a bit difficult. Um, and I realize it's been a bit depressing so far, a bit demotivational. Uh, everything I've told you is, oh, data science and practice is so hard. So let's, let's change things up a bit. Let's look at examples where successful stakeholder management uh, basically broke the circle, delivered value, showed the business, how important data science is, success stories. Now, the following examples are all real. They're real companies, real projects. I haven't included any names because I would like you to take those away more as success methods than success stories. So first up, uh, retail chain, the analytics branch uh, basically wants to introduce loyalty cards, digital loyalty cards. Uh, the challenge, this is a massive undertaking. Uh, we're talking retail chain with thousands of locations. How you do this, and that was back in the 90s, and data collection and analysis tools were very primitive at the time. Um, there's a rumor, or that's how the story was told to me, the CEO at the time uh, said, if I add the second to each checkout transaction, I'm losing millions a day. So the solution, uh, pretty obvious in hindsight, start with a few shops, have a trial run. If it goes well, expand slowly, which is exactly what they did. Uh, it's no cost to start with three or five shops, and at the end, the result, a uh, huge success for the business. Everyone else quickly followed, and we now all have five or six loyalty cards we don't really use. Second example, a uh, marketing firm wanted to build a knowledge graph with every customer touch point in order to build a next best action recommendation system. All right, very nice, very interesting data science project. Challenge, uh, too many resources needed and value not clearly defined. Solution, restructure the project, have specific use cases with a dollar sign having uplift against cost. So is this financially the right thing to do? One stakeholder saw, well, money, much more eager to discuss, project was delivered, significant revenue increase. Third example, financial firm trying to overhaul its entire risk management system. Typically, in finance, everything is legacy. It's siloed across different teams. They're using different technologies. No one knows what's happening. Stakeholders are a bit disheartened. Solution, talk to people. Create cooperative sessions, bring everyone on board, connect the dots, 
work towards a single goal. Result, uh, people found out that a lot of the work they were planning to do had already been done in different parts of the business, and they brought it all together in half the projected time. So, simple examples. Uh, let's see what we, what we learn from them. There's a cliché phrase and a better structure phrase underneath. First one is, start small, dream big. Or in normal terms, structure projects into many small iterations with incremental value gains. The benefits for the stakeholder, there's no big initial commitment. He's more likely to greenlit something that costs almost nothing. It's easier to understand uh, small parts than a full two-year project. And the stakeholder gets the opportunity to help define how the project is delivered by giving frequent feedback at every step of the process. Benefits for the data scientist is you build an actual relationship by not disappearing for six months and saying, we'll come back, but actually interacting with the stakeholder week after week, saying, what do you think? Would this be better? How do you like this? Would you prefer that? So you build a relationship. Uh, it's also easier to spec out uh, a small part of the project than to actually write down a plan for a project that needs a year of work. Right? Chances are you're not going to know what's in there yourself. And at the same time, you collect extremely useful domain expertise and experience that's not captured in the data sets, it's not captured in the project descriptions. You actually have to talk to people and get it from there. Second outcome, show them the money. Nothing original, but something data scientists often forget to do. Uh, provide a breakdown of costs and uplift at every iteration of a project. Stakeholder, obviously, is crazy about it because he can measure what he's agreeing to or not. Uh, he can cherry pick parts of the project, uh, what they call quick wins, low-hanging fruit, and decision-making is number-driven. Benefits for the data scientist is you actually get to calculate the results of your work, something you should be doing anyway, but it's good when you're also forced to do it for a stakeholder. And you replace abstract buy-in pitches with budget-specific discussions. And by doing that, you demonstrate proficiency in a, in a business environment. You're not a weird person in the corner coding. You are a business partner. You interact with other business people. You produce value. Third one, uh, again, nothing completely original. Communication is key. Reach out, discuss, present, repeat. This, is, this applies to everything a data scientist can do. If you don't communicate it, it's, it's worthless. Benefits for the stakeholder, uh, as mentioned, you're a human partner, you're not a machine. Ideas can be quickly communicated and tested. There's a quick back and forth, which is useful to get unstuck or get more resources. And over time, they get a better understanding of what you can actually provide for them, better understanding of the opportunities, of your limitations, so next projects are even easier. And the benefits for the data scientist is, well, best case scenario, you're proactive against reactive. You can plan a data strategy, a roadmap, uh, instead of putting out fires left and right. You get, once again, valuable insight just by talking to people, and you get exposure to the entire business structure. Like there might be a team that doesn't know you. You can get some interesting projects there. Just Talk, talk, talk to people. Uh, it can't do any harm. So it's been a few slides with other pictures, so I put them all together. Dream big, start small. Show me the money. Communication is key. Um, yeah. I guess no time for questions. Thank you.